Good morning, folks. We've got a full house of major news today. Deep space, solar system beneath our feet, and big announcements for the community. Let's begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding a very calm 24 hours despite a feature-laden Earth-facing disk, dark coronal holes, bright areas that lack proper sunspots, and so solar flaring was absent again as we watched the solar wind stream at Earth stabilize and begin to wane in intensity. We knew two items on that front yesterday. These coronal holes still had at least a day until they impact us, still probably have at least another day, and we expect a seismic uptick before that. A six-pointer struck Iran midday yesterday and showed where the infrastructure weakening from last month's seven-pointer was hiding behind the wallpaper. Dozens injured this time. Moving on now to the 1999 first light images of Cassiopeia A in optical, infrared, x-ray, and radio wavelengths. Today we see a phenomenal 300-year-old nova and via Chandra's x-ray bands, we can separate the signature of numerous elements blasting away from the center. The accompanying article seeks to compare elemental distribution in this nova with universal distributions, what you have inside your body, and fortifies the heavy element production hypothesis of nova, while I feel the need to remind everyone that every known element was detected streaming through the solar wind by Soho back in the 90s. Still sticking far away, find Orion, and at his feet, the rabbit. M79 is found within this area and is a tremendously dense region of star-forming space. Much like previous animations of distant clusters, we also get to peek in on the system in a bit of three dimensions. Coming closer to home, at Saturn, where the same Langmuir probe that gave us the ion-trapping dust study of hidden electric currents in Enceladus Plume has now demonstrated a coupling between the rings and the ionosphere of Saturn, exchanging a flow of ionized gas. Anyone know why that's important on a larger universal scale? Terrific piece out on Bout Ceres. If you've seen their best images, you know it's not just the crater basins that have some of the bright spots, and in fact, they say an actively geologic series is the best explanation for the plethora of bright features seen across the surface. We're coming down now to Earth, where scientists have said the Canary Island submarine landslides could be five times greater than anticipated, and that the largest land movement on Earth, which creates the biggest tsunamis, is caused by underwater volcanism. Nice note from the Weather Channel yesterday letting us know that every state saw at least one inch of snow in 2017. That does not happen every year, with Florida often bucking the 50 for 50 mark. Quick announcement. Folks, the Thunderbolts Project's next U.S. conference is not until 2019. Last weekend, they announced a third-party sponsored EU event in England in June, but no American event in 2018. We applaud the Bolts for taking the show across the water and want to mention that I've bolstered the electrical coverage at Observing the Frontier 2018 because of it. There will be EU material presented in 2018 in the U.S., and there will be at least three speakers from those conferences coming to Albuquerque and President's Day weekend next year. Adding another row of seats to the plan, by the way, gave us 30 extra tickets last night, which means we now have a whopping 33 tickets available. They're going to sell out before the new year. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.